I hate bugs. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Oh man, okay. Well, you deserve that Sunday off. And you yeah. deserve the Sunday facial. <laughs> I'm Sophie Pavitt and welcome to In The Chair With Sophie. I have my very special guest here, Ashley Quaffar, the founder of L'Apartement for F, the best croissant in New York City. <laughs> and today you. we're gonna do a beautiful facial, talk about skin and the store and food, I'm sure, because I love to eat. And we'll Same. go from there, okay? Sounds good. Awesome. So let's talk about what's going on with your skin recently. What are your skincare concerns? And we'll go from there. So I'm always congested on my nose and my chin area, mm -hmm. like my jaw. And then lately I've been noticing, I'm not sure if it's from being in the sun, but I've been getting more hyperpigmentation. Around this area? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's like one spot on my left cheek. I think you could probably see this it. This guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but that's mostly it. Okay. Are you doing anything about that or... No, Does it I, bother you that much? I mean, I've had two IPL treatments in the past to lighten them, mm -hmm. but um, since it's been the summer, not really. I think it's the best thing to do. Wait till it's cooler, mm -hmm. and then you can go do IPL again. We were talking about VIPL earlier. I think VIPL would be really good for you. Mm -hmm. But let's do a brightening treatment today. I think a peel would be good. Yeah. Um, because I know you're really vigilant with your sunscreen. Yes, and, I am. You know, we're like literally the same skin tone, so I know how hard it is in the yes. summer. <laughs> we'll start with a really gentle cleanse. I'm not gonna steam you very much because you do have a little pigmentation. You don't wanna get the skin too hot. Okay. But we'll go from there, okay? Okay, sounds good. Cool. So you weren't at the bakery today? No, I was out on Long Island for the bakery on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a pop-up with Jenny Kane. Oh, fun. Yeah, and then on Saturday, we did a pop-up with Equinox um, in Bridgehampton with Dorcia. Oh my gosh, yeah. so you've been busy this weekend, It was weekend, a little huh? bit of an adventure. Um, me and Noah, one of my employees, uh, who is responsible for all of like the brand collabs and events. Yeah. We wanted to have fun, so we decided to go glamping. Not for an event, just no, you just two like together. Friday night between events, we did glamping. Where was it? it was, in the Hamptons. Yep, in East Hampton. How was it? She's younger. <laughs> That's all you need to say. Yeah, and she's more brave. Um, was there a toilet? Yeah, there was a toilet. There was a shower, which felt like it was out of a horror movie. Why? Because the light was flickering oh, on and no. off, and you had to press a button, and only like scalding water came <gasps> out. So it was like a torture session. I know. I felt so bad. I was like, Noah, I'm so sorry. This is your first like work trip. I mean, she chose it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, we booked it on I Airbnb. Oh my god. We were god. being adventurous. Um, so because did, we did that Friday Saturday, we both were like. We're off on Sunday. Don't text each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. I Honestly, it was really fun. But I couldn't wait to be in my own bed and take a shower. I and, bet. Yeah. I'm, like, not a camper. No, I meant for the city. You know, I have a lot of friends who are really into camping. And even my husband is, like... You gotta take the boys camping. I can't think of anything worse. No. Like, how am I washing my face? That's like my first thing. Exactly. I like to be in a bed. Mm -hmm. I like I like doom scrolling before bed. I yep. know it's not good for your circadian rhythm. I don't care. Yeah. There was no outlets, it. so there's we had no to, outlets. there's no outlets. There's no cold water. No. There's bugs though. There's bugs. I hate bugs. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Oh man, okay. Well, you deserve that Sunday off. And you <laughs> deserve the Sunday facial. Well, honestly, good for you for being such a good sport about it, you know? Like, especially Noah, too. Yeah. So, wait, where did you wash your face? Let's talk about um, that. <laughs> so, I had micellar water. Genius so, move. Yeah, so I washed it with. Um, actually, my. Actually, Noah brought your face wash with she us. She did? Yeah. So. That wasn't a shameless plug No, or it wasn't, no. <laughs> that was too cute. Um, in the scalding water, and then I use micellar water. You know, I always tell my clients who have congested skin to use micellar over 
oil cleansing. Oh, well, that's good to know. That, just, that's really what I use. Yeah, it's just better for your skin. It doesn't leave any residue, mm -hmm. you know, like oil can be kind of like, it can leave just a little film on the skin. Yeah. And if you're receiving active treatment, like you're having an exfoliator or you put in something on afterwards, then it's better to have it really prepped, you know? Mm-hmm. I like the La Roche Posay micellar water. Yeah, that one's great. Micellar is like really easy to use, but what I tend to find is they're like not very transportable. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like the big biodermas from yes. France, they're like in liter bottles. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I'm like, just put it in a little bottle. All right, how does that feel? Good. So, like I said, we're going to do two masks today. We're going to do a glycolic mask, mm -hmm. um, which is the peel part. And this is going to feel spicy. Okay. And then once we've had that on for a few minutes, then we're going to wipe it off, which is going to feel even spicier. And then okay. we're going to neutralize it and then put a cooling mask on. But before those two ma be between those, I'm going to do a, a couple of extractions, okay. okay? And I didn't steam you for very long because it's hot yeah. and we don't want to heat up the skin. You want to keep it cool. Okay. That's really helpful for any kind of pigmentation and melasma. Um, I don't think you have melasma, you just have a little pigmentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, here comes the spicy, okay? okay. And we're going to time this. I'm going to time this on my, on my clock over there. It smells like apple pie. I was just gonna say, interesting smell. Right? Oh, it really does smell like apple pie. But it's very misleading, because it smells delicious, and then you're like, oh, it's spice time. What What makes it smell like apple? Um, Do you know? I, I honestly just think they make it smell nice, because it's so okay. spicy. <laughs> They're like distracting you from the pain. They're like, enjoy this scent, because it's gonna spice. Actually, I would say apple pie is almost triggering for me because... <gasps> In a good way or a bad way? It's No, you're totally fine. Okay. But for Thanksgiving, Gautier opened up the orders for think, uh, Thanksgiving pie. Okay. Thinking like, oh, what's the most that we, you know, how many people actually order? Oh my God, how Not many knowing. people? It was like 350, 400. <gasps> and we have a very small team. And what was the pie? It was an apple pie. An apple pie. And... When we were just in our apartment, it was Goatee making every apple pie, and so it was like, fine. But we booked our honeymoon during Thanksgiving because we booked our honeymoon before we even had a bakery, so yeah, we I wasn't thinking about that. So and, wait, you went on this honeymoon, right? And you had four hundred apple pies to make, right? And it was up to my staff, and between, like not being able to train them totally on Goatee's method and just like usual chaos of the bakery, we kind of left and the staff oh my God. was responsible for so many pies. I mean, we've learned so much from this experience, but my staff calls, calls it Pimageddon. Pimageddon? Because it was all hands on deck making that many pies. I think we had to like close two days to focus on it. Oh my God. And this is happening all during our honeymoon while we're halfway across the world. And where were you? We were in the Maldives. We were in the Maldives, so, so this is happening. So all of this is happening. The staff <laughs> is like, I don't know if we could do it. We're like, I was like, I want to go back. Oh my God. And is like, we can't. No. We're like no, no, on no. a remote island. But the staff like totally pulled through. They're so professional. They, it, it was very collaborative. Like the front of house, the back of house. Um, Tell Everyone me. loved the pies, so it, it was a good experience, but it was just, I mean, it was around the clock. Are you going to do the pie again this year? Yes, we've learned, but A, we have no vacations. Yes. During Pie Mageddon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we, we, we learned so much, so I think we're ready for Thanksgiving, but I don't think we realized how much... 400 pies is... 400 pies is a lot of pies. It's a lot of pies. Tell me the timeline from, like, setting up in your kitchen mm -hmm. and then opening up the bakery. Like, how how long did it take you to do it? I mean... I mean, explain to people... I mean, we know the story as New Yorkers. Yeah. Have an apartment for us. But, like, for, like top note, like, how, like the, the, pit, the elevator pitch. How did it start? I mean, 
honestly, it was a thought in January 2019. We were listening to a podcast, um, How I Built This, Mm -hmm. and it was talking about um, Kathleen Tate's. You know the Tate's cookies? Yeah. Um, She has a bakery in Southampton. So, like, super local to where I grew up. Mm -hmm. And we were listening to the story, and I was like, oh, Tay, like, I think you could sell the croissants that he recently started making in the bread. He started in November. So, by January, I'm already thinking it's good enough to sell to friends and family. And he's like, I don't know. I don't don't really... I'm not doing it for any reason just to... You know, it's it's just for us. Yeah. And then, come March, he's like, okay, maybe... So I go to work and I'm like, my husband is from France and he makes really good bread and croissants. Like everyone needs it. And they're like, okay. And where were you working at the time? I I was actually putting myself through nursing school. So I was working at a mortgage company. Yeah. Like processing and stuff. Really boring. Um, But it was to basically pay my way through school. So I was in nursing school too. And they all buy the croissants. And the next day, they're like, okay, next week, we want to double our order. That was incredible. And I'm like, okay, you got it. And then the next week, the world shut down. Yeah. And so those people never got their order. Um, Nobody got their order. Nobody got their order. We were inside and just, you know, trying to survive like everyone else. And he just kept baking and practicing and... You know, it really distracted us during yeah. such a scary time. And then in June, people started leaving their apartments again. And we decided, you know what? We really want to sell. Like, we really think it's it's almost like a gift to people yeah. to have, like, warm homemade bread. Absolutely. Um, so we put up a menu online, like, on Facebook and on Instagram and we thought, like, I don't know, what what's the best that can happen? Like, maybe we sell, like, 30 croissants or something. Mm-hmm. And people started ordering right away. And each order, we would, they would tag us and their friends would order. And, I mean, we were getting orders from people in Germany <laughs> who were sending us. Who, who, How? We weren't shipping to Germany, but we they would say, like, you know what, my daughter is stuck in the oh, U.S. So during this time, you have to remember, nobody could travel. No. Everyone was home. Weddings were being canceled. People were getting sick. People were losing loved ones. Like, it was such an intense time. So people from all over would get wind that we were delivering bread. So somebody would say, I can't visit my daughter. You know, she's stuck in New York. Can you can you send her some croissants? That's so cute. Right. And sweet. I know somebody I, I know somebody was like, you know, my best friend's wedding was supposed to be today. And at the time we were handwriting little notes to each person. That's so cute. Um, for free, obviously. So we would say, is there anything you want to let them know? So I mean sometimes I felt like I was writing full like cards to yeah. people. And it just kept growing and growing so we started selling in june um and exactly one year almost to the day that we posted a menu we signed a lease (gasps) yeah so amazing i mean i've been to the apartment for (laughs) it it's incredible you know where it is because there's a line through the door at all times (laughs) we're so lucky i mean i i just can't believe how it happened really so much support from day one like I know that's not um everybody's story so I definitely don't take it for granted that we were so welcomed by strangers yeah it's amazing I mean it was such an awful time for a lot of people but I do hear these like stories where there was real like pivotal life moments you know like even in a in a much lesser scale but but still relevant for my business, I mean, mm-hmm. I definitely started focusing on problematic skin more during the pandemic because I would be doing virtual consults for people. And so, awesome. I, I mean, I remember coming home on like March 13, 2020 mm-hmm. with a six month old at home whose nursery had shut down oh and being ordered to close the studio because right. nobody was allowed to have any personal care 
things anymore. Mm-hmm. And I came home and like made a martini. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, I'm uh, unemployed and I'm a stay at home mom and I don't and know what I'm going to do. the future is so unknown. Yeah, it was really scary. It was really scary. And I think that the bakery was, I mean, it, it's hard to say, but I definitely know that if we did this at any other time, it wouldn't have been so impactful. I just feel like everyone was craving community. Mm-hmm. Well, I also think that if it wasn't delicious and amazing, you wouldn't be here three years later either. Yeah. You know, so you did something <laughs> right. I don't think it would, like, I think, yes. True. But at the same time, like, you know, you guys are famous. That's, your, your croissants. That's and- how I knew we had something is because... It wasn't just new people ordering and taking a picture and, you know, never ordering again. It was people ordering and then being like, okay, I want the same order next week. So our return customer was so high. Yeah. I'm doing some extractions now, if you didn't notice already. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little squeezing. If I get too in- into it, you just let me know, okay, if you need okay. a break. But you don't have much to get rid of. Does it come out easy or is it a little tough? Yeah, you know, you should take a fish oil, though. Do you yeah? One? No. I'm just nervous because I heard it doesn't taste good. Well, you should get one that's enteric coated. Okay. Do you know what that means? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you're a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's only a couple of companies that do it, but it helps because then it doesn't break open in your stomach. It doesn't okay. give you that gross burp that right, everybody right. hates. That's which the is, one thing it, I'm nervous about. It's gross. Um, but fish oil and omegas in general are really good at softening the oil production within your skin Mm -hmm. it brings down inflammation but it also just softens your your skin i have like a lot of vegan clients and i can tell as soon as i meet someone if they're plant-based because they don't have many fats and oils in their diet that's and so people, interesting. It's such a controversial stance. Like I've definitely yeah. posted about it on the internet and people have been like, a vegan diet's the best kind of diet. You know what? A vegan diet is very healthy. I'm not I'm not saying it's it isn't. Right. But you really, really have to make sure that you are packing your diet with oils and fats because it doesn't come naturally within plants. Totally. And and, and you know, grains and you you need like that avocado and flax and hemp and I was a vegan for six months and a vegetarian for most of my life, except now I eat meat starting in the pandemic. Yeah. But... Was that your French husband, do you think? That's exactly what it was. He broke me down finally. What did he cook you? (laughs) What was the first thing? What what broke your edge? Honestly, to be fair, I was so nervous of getting sick. Yeah. Um, from eating meat for the first time in like 15 years. I bet. It's a lot. that, That like a slice of turkey cold cuts like I started really small I love that you went in with like a turkey cold cut as your first <laughs> yeah. thing though um I know like super bland but I was just like I really wanted was it good I mean yeah it was amazing you were like wow like, here it is brought like the flush back into my cheeks oh my gosh um, so funny. and then he was making like stews and he was making like Persian food for me oh yum that had meat that I mean you know my dear friend Roya is oh like yeah, yeah. Our Persian I love her. Yeah. And her her meals, like she was telling me about some of her like. I need a co- I need her cookbook. My God, she's telling me like a date omelet that I was oh. like, I want to eat that now. It sounds so good. You know, I have a lot of reformed uh, vegetarian friends who always go in with the bacon. The bacon is what I'm gets them. I'm obsessed with bacon now. It's I need to chill a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like making up for lost time. Yeah. I mean, I have two sons, and, like, both of them are just obsessed with me. It's it's so funny, you know? Yeah. Especially in the summer, we barbecue so Yeah. Much. All right, just doing a little squeezing around the jawline. That know. one's been there for a second. It's not there anymore. Yes. And that's what we call a closed comedone. There's two types of kind of congestion in the skin. You get like the inflamed guys, which is more mm-hmm. like an acne breakout. And then close comedones are considered a breakout, like an acne. But it's like an, it's a, it's basically a congestion without an opening. So I give it a little squeeze and it comes out. All right, I did a nice 
bunch of squeezing. I'm gonna put the cooling mask on now. Okay. Before I do your jelly mask. We're doing multiple masks today. Many masks. I love a good mask. On a Sunday night, what a treat. And I then know. you go home. <laughs> it's not humid today, finally. Did you notice that? Yes, I noticed that because I was in the tent and it was very humid and sticky. Oh my god, you were there in the tent in the yeah, humidity. And no then it AC. rained. No AC. There was a little fan in between Noah and I. We like put it on a chair because we're like, who gets the fan? So we were like, well, let's put it in the middle. And we pointed it straight. So like no one got the <laughs> no fan. No one got the fan. <laughs> I woke up I'm like, oh my god. You know, it's considered very bad luck to sleep with a fan on in some places. Oh, I didn't know that. And I have a really like deep rooted terror of sleeping with a fan on because mm -hmm. when I was 16 I had a Bell's palsy. Wow. And there's some reading like there's some old wives tales about like how you can get Bell's palsy from sleeping in a draft. Have you heard that no. before? And so I'm truly terrified of it. That's so funny. Isn't that hilarious? It's like always stuck with me. I'm like I never want that to happen to me ever again. How do you feel about AC? AC is great. It's okay. just like the actual blowing of cold air on my face. I'm like, no thanks, mm -hmm. not for me. Even in the car, like I'll turn it off. Like That's so funny. If we've got the AC on cracked on, I'm just like, ch ch like not around my face. My my French friends are like that. Is it? Is yeah, it like they, a European thing? I think so because they didn't grow up with AC. So if I have the AC on, my friend Lucy will be like, I'm, I'm getting sick. <laughs> So you're not you're getting, getting sick, sick from the AC. She's like, no, I'm getting a chill. That's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, I love AC. It's I've I've been here for 20 years, so mm -hmm. like I I fully I fully appreciate it. I know my it. husband has totally embraced AC, even though he's. French. I love it. But to be fair, in his house growing up, he grew up in Grenoble, which is right near the mountains. Oh, it's so probably like stone cold in his house, right? It's stone cold in the winter and then in the summer, for some reason, it's very, very hot. Yeah. I guess like the mountains like trap all the heat. Interesting. He's like in the middle of that, all yeah. the mountains, so. Does his parents still live there? Yes. So cool. Yeah. And it, they don't have AC, right? They don't have AC except Gautier's room was the highest mm -hmm. so it was like unbearably hot so he was the only one with ac oh so maybe he's just used to it yeah no one in the uk has ac yeah period it's like not a thing yeah i remember i mean really no one in france so he's just i think out of survival so he didn't like cook a rarity in, in yeah. the attic basically because he's like very but no one else has ac I remember doing a summer internship in London when I was like 20 years old, before I moved to the States, and it being like the hottest summer on record in London, it was like everyone was melting, and we would get out of our rooms, people would sleep in the garden. Wow. Because it was so hot. It's so interesting. We used to sleep in like the tile in the kitchen, because oh <laughs> it was so hot. Oh my goodness. I mean, this was a long time ago as well, so it was a little bit more, it was more like when, in my glamping phase, you know? Yeah. Not now. But I it's like so to be cold in bed. Yeah. How's that feeling? Cool. Feels good, yeah. Nice. So we're just bringing the heat down after that glycolic. Like minty or yeah. something. It's got a little menthol in it. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit of massage and then we're gonna put your jelly mask on. Do you have a crazy busy week ahead? Like what's going on? I know. Well, Gautier's sister and her family, they're visiting. Mm hmm. They're actually staying in our apartment, so it's a very full house. Um. And, and nieces, right? Yes. Two nieces. They're like preteens. And they're really cute. How old um, are they? Like 13 and 11. Oh my god, so fun. Yeah. And they're so sweet. Even though they speak limited English and I speak very limited French, we're very close. Yeah. Um, Goatee's sister's a mathematician, <gasps> a professor, and she's Stop. like so, so, so smart, but she doesn't really, she's not very like a girly girl yeah so you know she's just like super bright but like not into makeup or skincare and, and i like obviously obsessed. am and so and i'm very american to them so i'm like the aunt that's like has a million skincare oh, products that's that are so just fun. watching me and they like want to play with my makeup 
I'm gonna give you a jelly mask to take home for them. Okay. Oh, that's. Oh my god, you I would should, love that. You should take one home. I will. That, I will. They will love it because it's so fun, and you'll be even much of a yeah a dream auntie. Yeah. You can put it on them for. They're them. always putting my makeup on, and I do their nails for them. I love that. So they're here. I could see them like going through my my stuff. That's so fun. Yeah, it's really sweet. I remember I showed them like my Caudalie toner. Oh, like the Mista? Yeah, which is like fifty dollars here. I mean, in France, it's half the price. You're talking about like the the yeah. hydrator, right? Right. I love that. Me stuff. too. And so I bought it in the U.S. So I like paid fifty dollars for it. But I was in France, and they saw me miss it on my face. Oh no! <laughs> so they were just like <laughs> like spraying like it was like they used half the bottle and i was like whoa whoa it's, <laughs> like, fine. it's, it's, it's cheap fine. here but it's definitely <laughs> i was like you guys sparingly please use That's sparingly so but they're just yeah they're so precious so we'll be doing a lot of like touristy things this week i have one niece and i'm like well that's not true i actually have many nieces and nephews because i have stepbrothers who mm-hmm. all have um kids like we have loads of nieces and nephews actually but like there's one niece in in particular who's a little older i have two sons so i'm always like i really hope they're into skincare i want to like pass that on you know yeah but i was a handbag designer in my past life too so i'm like who's going to inherit all my handbags like maybe nico and rocco i don't know yeah yeah maybe but there's something fun about like girly girls i know I could see, yeah, it's so funny. Like for Christmas, I'll get Melody, who is Goatee's. My name uh, is Melody. Melody's so such cute. a cute name. I know. I'll get her, um, you know, like girly girl things. And then her mom gets her, like, like super intelligent things, like puzzles and yeah. books and STEM stuff. Yeah, totally, totally. And then I'll get her, like, a doll. And then she's, like, playing with the doll. But, you know, it's because it's so different. You know, I think there's, like, that it, That just means that you're, like, a fun... I mean, totally. I think my niece is a, a little bit like that, where she's, like, my Auntie Sophie's, like, really crazy. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do my makeup. Yeah. And I remember I got her, like, bath bombs one year, and the, the bath bombs had, like, little pieces of jewelry in them. Mm-hmm. And she, like, hated the bath bombs so much because it turned the color of the water green. Uh-huh. I was like, there's a there's a necklace in it. She was like, ah! and she hated it so much. So it was so funny. Bummed. I actually got Melody a bath bomb. We for Christmas, you usually there's so many nieces and nephews in Gautier's family. He has a big French family. Yeah. We're the only ones childless, so it's like my pleasure to like go kind of crazy for our god kid. Yeah. Which is Melody. And um she was looking at my makeup and even though, like I said, her English is very limited, I could tell that she wanted more makeup. Oh. And she told Gautier that her best friend has a whole case. A whole case of makeup. Of makeup, and that she doesn't really have much. Oh. So I went to Sephora, and I was like, the sky's the limit. Like, get let's the palette. Everything. Yeah. Oh, Every cute. palette you could get. Bath bombs. It's That's so, so cute. fun. Yeah. I remember when I was little, I was really into um, the body shop. Yes. I'm yep. I'm 40, so like my the, like early 90s, like the body shop was the spot in the UK, right? The body shop's nice. I was into, do you know Bath and Body Works? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Bath and Body Works, I mean, the first place I moved to when I moved to the States was Columbus, Ohio. Oh, is so that the, like, Bath yeah, and Body Works? It's like the headquarters like, or yeah, something? Yeah, I've been to, like, the Bath and Body That's Works. That's so funny. My mum would always get a candle at Christmas. It's actually, like, very nostalgic. Totally. When I, when I walk past the Bath and Body Works now, because, I mean, I was 20 when I first moved here, and, like, you could smell that store mm-hmm. down the hallway of the mall, you know? That and Annie's. Yes. I don't know why. I guess I've always been into, like, fragrance and skincare and all that stuff so my very first boyfriend in high school for christmas i remember like my first gift from you know a boyfriend was sweet pea sweet like the whole set of sweet pea bath and what body guy. works what a guy what a guy he had a really cool mom he, i was just gonna was say like, it was definitely his this mom is, this is the moment <laughs> are you okay with this going over your eyelids oh totally 
Um, do you remember Henry Bendel candles? No. They were my favorite. And it's funny, I had I was interviewed for like Into the Glass a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And Ali Oshinsky who interviewed me and we like waxed lyrical about the Henry Bendel scented candles. That's... You remember Henry Bendel, right? Yes, yeah. But the store's all closed in the they US at all least, right? Closed. So you I mean, you can still buy the candles on eBay because I've looked so at them. So funny. But there was like all these I mean, the candles were amazing. Oh, I I need to go online and look for this candle. This now. was well, this was before like I don't know, maybe maybe I was younger and I didn't realize, but like Dipsy was like not a big thing. Like mm -hmm. it was it was a brand, but like there weren't scented candles like there are yeah. now. Then like a Henry Bendel candle I think was like 60 bucks. Yeah. Which was like a big it was like a lot of money, totally, you know. Totally. Like 15, 16 years ago. I feel like with social media too, everyone saw the Dipatique candles and they wanted to use them as like jars for Q-tips oh, yeah. and you stuff. Put so that's in yeah. It. it was like such a like it's a thing. Flex. Yes. You have a dip totally. like base mm -hmm. Q-tip holder <laughs> in your in your bathroom. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have. I definitely did it. I did. It with, <laughs> I put like matches in it. Yes. Um. Like makeup brushes and stuff. I mean, I love candles. I love fragrance. None of my products have fragrance in them because we work primarily with sensitive skin. To but yeah. like for me, fragrance is joyful. Mm -hmm. I love it. You know what fragrance I've been really loving is um do you know the French the I think it's only in Paris, Officine Bully. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love they have like this tuberose scent that yeah. I'm obsessed with. Is that what you wear all, every day? No, actually well I use their lotion. Uh -huh. Um Okay, so I have a funny story about the scent that I've been wearing. I don't think I'm wearing it right now, though. So, um, my two employees who work front of house um, really liked the way a customer smelled. And they said, where did you get your perfume? And the customer had this perfume from Mexico City. Okay. And it was like $100 for this small little bottle. Yeah. So each of my employees like bought it right on the spot. From Mexico City. From Mexico City. Ordered it. Ordered it. Okay. They're like, this is going to be our signature scent. Okay. They were so excited. It gets in the mail and they hate it. Or or they're just like, this isn't for me. Okay. So I'm like, oh, how bad can it be? So I sprayed on me. I fall in love with it. <gasps> so I bought it from both of them. What's it called? I, I have to, I'll, I'll send you the bottle. Oh um, my God. I don't know what it's called. That's so fun. It's so, it's, I love smelling like a grandmother. Like, like little like flowery, chic, powdery, older, yeah. I love powdery scents. Mm. So it's it's definitely um, mature of a scent. You know, my mum in the eighties would have like Dior Poison and Dune and all those like Aww. really musky, yes. heavy eighties scents. Mm -hmm. And then I remember Eternity by Calvin Klein coming oh, out gosh. and being like, oh, this, is, this is how I want to smell as a grown-up. Yeah. Like, this is it. I think my you know? mom has Eternity, Calvin yeah. Klein. Yeah. And then when I got here and everyone started wearing La Labo, Santal, mm -hmm. and now it smells like the CK1 of Williamsburg because yeah. everybody wears it. Oh, that is, that is the scent the of The CK1 Brooklyn. of Williamsburg. Yes. Right? Totally. I remember when that perfume came out and being like, what is this perfume? It's delicious. I love La Lava. It's so good. And even now, like my my mum, I'd like had a big bottle of it. And then I was like, I don't want to wear it so much. Cause like, it's so, it really does crowd a room when yeah. you wear that scent, like everybody smells it. And I remember my mum coming over and being like, oh, I love that perfume. And I just gave it to her. And she Aww. lives in Wales. So like, She's the coolest person in Wales. Nobody yeah. has that scent. I know, you know? I know. And like, you smell amazing. <laughs> it's so good. I have their hand wash and lotion in my bathroom. It's so good. I like the Costa Brazil scent. Oh, me too. Have you smelled that one? Yeah. It's like very woodsy. And it is like a sandalwood, but a little bit to the left. Yes. You know? Yes. I love that. I love that scent. Yeah. Goti and I went to one of their... I don't know if it was when they were like debuting a mm -hmm. new scent, but we were invited by Carrie Diamond mm -hmm. from Cherry Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Where did you go? It was it was somewhere in Soho. Um, 
it was it was a cool experience. They were giving facials, mm-hmm. and they had all of the beautiful uh, fragrances on display. Yeah, they did a really amazing uh, activation out in um, this like amazing hotel. I'm gonna get it wrong. Palm, the Royal Palm. Oh, I've heard of it. You know the one I'm talking yeah. about, right? Yeah. In Gra- is it Grand Cayman? I think I'm not sure where it is. Wherever it is, that hotel looks like the place I want to be. Wow. It's so beautiful. The spa is like all this polished, like, like burnt orange marble. Ooh. And they did this beautiful, like they had all the girls there, the gorgeous mm-hmm. girls, you know. Paloma was there and a ton of beautiful girls. Yeah. And Goti and I leave August 8th to go to Bordeaux for my <gasps> one of my best friends. Uh, she couldn't make it to the parcel event mm-hmm. that we met at, but... Her name is Lucy, and she owns a cake shop in the East Village. Oh, cool. From Lucy. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah, so she's getting married in uh, August 12th, I think. Was she a baker before you? Well, so to be fair, did- I've never been a baker. but Well, no. Like, did she have, like, the bakery before you? <laughs> no, no. So what happened wow. is... Um, so during the pandemic, all these people who were not professionally trained were just, like you know, baking for the love of it yeah. and then started selling. So, so we started and then one of our customers brought us a little from Lucy Kate, like kind of right when she started. Yeah. And I reached out to Lucy and I was like, Oh my gosh, your cakes are so gorgeous. I'd love to meet you. You know, if I ever own a bakery, I'd love to like sell your cakes. And, uh, she was like, yeah, let's totally meet. So, so we met up and then we hit it off. I love this story. Yeah, and then we were just like like talking to each other about our prices and yeah. how to deal with this customer situation and just you know, the laws and and just everything. Um we just became super super close and like Instagram and social media and just you know, she I I can't believe I had somebody to go through this like crazy experience with who mm-hmm. actually understood the trials and, you know, tribulations of owning a bakery inside your apartment um, literally a bakery inside your apartment. literally yeah she so her story is that she worked at an art gallery that obviously had to let everyone go because of the pandemic her mom is a baker in france so she's french too yeah she's actually she's french and kiwi her mom is from new zealand wow so um yeah so she makes like cakes that are very inspired by her mom and um I I think she started a little bit after us um so I feel like me and Gautier were like learning how to open a shop and we did our kickstarter and we did like a a video for the kickstarter and then I kept saying like Lucy you you really should uh go for it yeah so then we helped her with her kickstarter we got her in touch with our videographer who was amazing um, you know, she was there for us when we had our opening day and then we were, we were able to return the favor and help her with hers. I love that so much. Yeah. It's, and I love how collaborative it is. I mean, oh my beauty, gosh. beauty is very similar, you know? Totally. We totally. all want each other to win. Totally. That's what I love, especially even like other bakeries. Um, it really feels like there's no competition. There's just room for so many people. Yeah. Like everybody has their own thing and I don't know it's been it's been really fun to be part of the food industry Mm -hmm. I just yeah I don't know I also think that's like with an attitude where you just like want everyone to win like the more you give the more you get I totally believe that yeah how's that feeling it's gonna be great Mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish with a little vitamin c e and a okay a little hydration and some moisturizer and you're ready for bed okay what I know, time I do you like, usually go to bed? <laughs> uh, it depends. Um, sometimes, like 10 p.m., my eyes are, I'm dead. And I'm on the couch and Gautier has to, like, carry me to Drag bed. Drag you to bed. Yeah. He's so funny. Like, he'll go to bed before me. And I'm like, okay, I'll be right there. you wake I'll up just, at 1 o'clock in the morning on the yes. couch? Yes. Well, I would. But he's like, come to bed. <laughs> Ashley, I'm like, can you leave me alone? He's like, come to bed. Come to bed. I'm like, oh my god. 
See, I have two natural alarm clocks called Nico and Rocco, uh -huh. who are age four and two. Oh my goodness. And so, if I don't go to bed, I'm in trouble. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm I'm early, early to bed, like 8.30. Oh, good for you. I wish I could be. But I'm, I am like just an uncomfortably early riser. Yeah. We wake up early without an alarm clock also because we own a bakery so yeah. it's very early hours do you, do you do the bakery in the mornings no um luckily now we have such a good staff like we're in such a really good place with our bakers and our front of house that we can rely on them in the morning um but we wake up early because we always have texts from the overnight crew yeah and like I don't think a day goes by where the opener is not asking us questions, so we o we're always on alert. Yeah. But we usually get to the bakery around like 10. How many customers do you have a day? Um, a lot. <laughs> I was like looking at like <gasps> coffee sales, like just coffee alone. It's like 200. Our, our baristas make like 200 drinks a day. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. It's amazing. It's like over a thousand croissants a day. Croissant. Yeah, it's so cool. It's crazy. Are you sick of the croissants yourself? No. No. <laughs> that's no. a good that's a good answer. <laughs> like genuinely no. I mean, I've had one and they're delicious. Thank you. I mean, I don't eat them every day. Um I I do eat them often though. Yeah. But every time I eat one, I'm like, wow, this is so good. Yeah, that's amazing. And my staff also like when we first started, we were like, we just want to make sure they have one free pastry a day. Like we were like that was like in the yeah handbook like make sure you eat yeah they eat so many pastries a day <sighs> and we're like okay honestly it's so good because they're like our number one fans yeah so our staff is definitely getting well, you, you got a it. lot of croissants in them too even when i have like people who work at the studio i'm like you need to try the product totally, to make sure totally. that you love them and and you can sell them yeah so it's the same with, with croissants right yeah you're all set, my friend. Thank I'm just you. Just taking your hair out for you. I might actually get you to do it because I don't want to pull your hair too much. Okay, but okay. Your skin looks beautiful. Thank you. I can't Thanks wait to see it. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for you're having me. Yeah.